Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Trust him that he's working in you and he will do what needs to be done the way it needs to be done when it needs to be done and he wants you to love yourself in the meantime. Some of the things that you're fighting with and wrestling with and trying to change and being aggravated about and being mad about and telling God how you can't stand it one more day. Come on now. If you change your attitude, it's going to make so much difference. Stop saying if this doesn't change, I can't take it one more day. You need to start saying I can do whatever I need to do. Because the power of God lives in me. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in me, and I can do whatever I need to do. Is anybody hearing me today? Well, I cannot change myself, but I can pray and I can study, so I need to do that. And if I pray and I study and I depend on the Holy Spirit to do in me what I cannot do in myself, from glory to glory, little by little, it will get done. But you never know how much space there's going to be between the glories. That means God may change you a little bit in something here and you're a little more glorious than you were. But you still got a problem, still got a temper, still got a big mouth, whatever it is. And man, you want to change right now. Because you love God and you want to be what you're supposed to be and you're tired of that issue cropping up. And so you try to change yourself and that's not working. Actually, the more you try, have you ever noticed the more you try to change yourself, the worse you act? Come on. And so now you finally got to the point where you're saying, okay, God, I know I can't do this. I'm asking you to do it. But you'd like him to do it tomorrow and he doesn't. Or the next day, or the next day, or the next day, or the next day. Well, there's going to be another glory somewhere over here, but nobody knows exactly how much space there's going to be between the glories. And what God wants you to do in between here is trust him Trust him that he's working in you and he will do what needs to be done the way it needs to be done when it needs to be done. And he wants you to love yourself in the meantime. You know why? Because he does. God's not surprised by your behavior. I mean, he's not going to go to bed tonight thinking, man, I sure didn't know you were going to act like that today. <laughs> What a shock. I mean, he didn't call me to do this and then have a little conversation with Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Well, I think we made a bad pick here. I didn't know she was going to act like that. <laughs> no, he knows everything about us before it happens. Every word that we've not spoken, every thought that we have not yet thought. And he told Jeremiah, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And not because Jeremiah did everything right. He was a little bit of a coward, if you want to know the truth. He was concerned about what people thought. And God said, you get out there and you do what I'm telling you to, and don't you be afraid of their faces, because if you're afraid, you're going to fail. But if you keep your eyes on me, you'll succeed. Don't be looking at everything you're not. When God called Moses, all Moses could talk about was everything he couldn't do. Quit telling God everything you can't do. He already knows. And there's some stuff you think you can do that you can't do. <laughs> all right, 2 Corinthians 3. You doing okay? Yeah. Love yourself while you're waiting. You know what I finally just said to God? It is what it is. Deal with it. And I wasn't saying it in a sarcastic way. It's like, I, I cannot, I cannot keep myself from ever saying anything that I shouldn't say. I just cannot. You're welcome to give it a go. 
And I pray about it. I mean, I got all these scriptures down, man. Oh, God, put a watch over my mouth lest I sin against you with my tongue. I mean, I got them all. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, oh, God. I will speak excellent and high and princely things. I mean, I got it, you know. Now, I can pray and I can study and I've got about every book you could buy on the mouth. And I've written one. Come on. Now, hey, I've come a long way. But I can't get frustrated because I still make some mistakes. They're further and fewer, further between and fewer than what they used to be, but I haven't reached that place of perfection. And so I finally just got so tired of being aggravated with myself every day that I just said, it is what it is. God, as long as you've got me on your service, as long as I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm probably going to say a few dumb things. It is what it is. You deal with it. And I'm just going to enjoy myself. Come on. Now see, some of you, that old stinking religious thinking is making you think, well, I don't know about that. It almost sounds like you're saying you don't care. No, I care, but I've had to cast my care so he will take care of me. Because there's no point in caring about something you can't do anything about. I want to change. That's my whole life is God changed me. I want to be in your will. But I refuse to be aggravated at myself one more day because I have not reached perfection yet. I'm in the process. I'm in between glories. I've got another one coming, but I'm going to enjoy this space that I'm in right now. And I refuse to look at your glory and wish I was in the glory you're in. Come on, you can be praying five minutes every morning as a new Christian and you just think you've died and gone to heaven. My goodness, you're getting up every day and praying until you go have breakfast with Sister Super Christian. And she... <laughs> And she tells you about her ministry and intercession and how she arises every morning at 5 and prays until 9, nonstop. And now you're like, what, what's wrong with me? You know what? I just double dare you to go ahead and be just thrilled about your five minutes. You know what? You're not called to be her. You don't have to compete. You don't have to compare. God likes your five minutes energized by the Holy Ghost more than he would like it if you got into a works trip trying to do what she's doing with no grace on you to do it. Oh, I've done that. We had an intercessor come to the church and she talked about her life of prayer. And I mean, I felt like such a spiritual dud by the time she left. I mean, you could just feel the anointing of God all over this woman. And I thought, that's it. I'm praying four hours every day. And I got me a room, and I got a clock, and I made a big mistake. I announced it to my family. <laughs> you see this room? That is my prayer room. Every morning, I will be in there for four hours. Do not bother me. <laughs> and in about five minutes, I'd prayed about everything I could think of to pray about. Because <laughs> I was still on the five-minute anointing. <laughs> I hadn't got into her glory yet. And not only that, I never have. But you know what? I bet I could outstudy her. Because I can study until most people's eyeballs would pop out. Because God's called me as a teacher, and I have a grace to study. I love it just about as much as I love preaching. But it would be wrong for me to try to tell you that you have to do that. I tell you to study, but I'm not going to tell you you have to study as long as I study or the way I study. We need to be careful sometimes about giving our testimony and make sure it's truly a testimony to edify somebody and not a little secret way for us to brag. Oh, well. 
I'm having fun anyway. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage and freedom. And all of us, as with unveiled face, and that has to do with not looking at the word like the law. I won't get into that whole teaching, but that's great too. All of us as with unveiled face, because we continued to behold in the word of God as in a mirror, <laughs> the glory of the Lord, the word of God becomes like a mirror. And here's the thing. I can have a big stain on my outfit here and not even know it unless I look in the mirror. Oh, I got to get that off. Oh, oh. My gosh, let me get it off. Oh man, it looks worse than it did. <laughs> wow, I'm never going to get this out now. I'm just rubbing it into the material deeper and deeper. Oh, that just aggravates me. I've ruined this whole outfit. And I'm just... Okay, I've spilled coffee on my carpet at home. And I've tried to do that and just keep rubbing it in deeper and deeper. But then I found out about this stain remover. <laughs> now, look, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is like the stain remover in your life. Oh, come on, this is better than that. So, here you go. You're reading your word and you're going, oh my God, I am a mess. <laughs> I got a big mouth, my mind's messed up, I'm argumentative, I'm controlling, I'm angry, I've got unforgiveness. I'm going to change. And you just keep making it worse and worse and worse. But if you can learn that the Holy Spirit is the one that changes us, then you just simply say, God, I'm so sorry that I'm like that. I'm going to study in this area. I'm going to pray in this area. But God, I need you to change me. Holy Spirit, I ask you to change me. Then he comes along and just... And then you're like, whoa, that's cool stuff. It's gone. Amen? Come on. We need some Holy Ghost stain remover. Amen? Woo! <laughs> hey, I've never done that. That's fun. <laughs> How many of you get that? God help us. I'll do what I can do. I'll have the courage to do what I can do, but I'm going to have the courage to accept what I cannot do and the wisdom to know the difference. Do what you can do. God will do what you cannot do, but he may not do it the way you'd like him to, and he probably won't do it when you'd like him to. But you can still enjoy the journey. God is working in you. Go to Philippians 4. The Apostle Paul said, not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content. <laughs> you don't just get that, you don't just show up with that ability to be content, you have to learn it. And part of learning it is learning the uselessness of trying to do something about something you can't do anything about. And having the courage and I don't think a lot of people have this kind of courage. Having the courage to go ahead and enjoy your life while you've got a problem you can't handle. I think we almost kind of think it's ungodly to do that. I mean, we ought to worry. We ought to be upset. We need to try to fix this. No, I think God admires a man or a woman who's got their faith and confidence in him and says, you know what, God? I've done what I can do. I can't do anything else. I'm trusting you, and I'm going to enjoy the journey. Now here's what the Amplified Bible says it means to be content, and I love this. 
satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am in. So that didn't mean that Paul's saying he never wanted anything else to change. You can still want to see change. But Paul said, I've learned how to be content. I'm satisfied with my right now. Because I'm trusting God that he's working on this. And if it was supposed to be different today, it would be different today. And if tomorrow it's supposed to be different, then he'll change it tomorrow. And I guess if he never changes it, then that's not what he wants. And it is what it is. And I have the ability to deal with it, but I'm not going to let it steal my life. I'm not going to let it steal my joy. Now, verse 12, I know how to be abased and live humbly in straightened circumstances. And I know how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I've learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without and being in want. I have strength for all things. In Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything. I'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Wow. What a scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But it's interesting to me that we apply that to everything in the world except our trials and tribulations. <laughs> Come on. And Paul was talking about something specific. He was saying, listen, if I've got it good, great. I can handle that. But if I don't have it good, I can handle that too. I can stay happy and not get my way. Uh-oh. Now we're going deep. I said, you can stay happy and not get your way. You can have peace and not know what's going on. You can have peace and totally not understand what God is doing in your life or why. Now, if you want to, you can try to sit around and figure it out all the time. But it's just going to make you miserable. It's just going to confuse you. Stay out of other people's business. The less you know, the better off you are. I had a real hard time with that one. I was Miss Rosie Nosy. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace that passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. So if you've got a problem and you don't know what to do, do what you can do, give the rest of it to God, and be thankful. Find something in your life to be thankful about. Have the courage to accept gracefully what you cannot change. That doesn't mean God can't change it. But I can promise you that he probably won't do it on your timetable. He won't do it the way you'd like him to. But I want to, as we finish today, I want us to take the time to read. I'm going to read to you and make a few comments on Psalm 37. I normally won't read that much scripture because it's hard to keep somebody's attention, but I believe that we can do it this morning. This is going to send you out shouting. How many of you know that there's a whole lot of nasty stuff going on in the world today? Wow. Psalm 37, verse 1. Love the way it starts out. Fret not yourself. <laughs> Fret not yourself. Stop getting yourself upset. We got any sister and brother frets here this morning? Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not upright or in right standing with God. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. God's saying, I'm taking care of this. Just don't get fretful. Don't lose your peace. Don't lose your joy. Don't spend an excessive amount of time talking about it. I think we need to be informed about what's going on in the world. But I tell you, if you just do nothing but listen to the news all day, you're going to go crazy. Amen? Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord and do good. 
so shall you dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness, and truly you shall be fed. And that's not just talking about getting a plate full of food. That's talking about having joy and peace and a, a sense of completeness and fullness and satisfaction in your life. What is God telling us to do? There's two things in here you don't want to miss. Trust God, number one, and number two, do good. Do good. The best way for you to get the, the devil back is to put your trust in God and go help somebody else. Did you hear me? Put your trust in God and go help somebody else. Those are the seeds that you need to sow for God to do a miracle in your life. You can't help yourself, but you can help somebody else. Do what you can do while you're waiting on God to do what you can't do. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Whew. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll each care of your load on Him. Trust on, lean on, rely on, and be confident in Him. And He will bring it to pass. <laughs> he will make your uprightness and right standing with God. Go before as the light. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for Him and patiently. Patience is not about waiting. It's about how you act while you're waiting. And patiently lean yourself upon him. Fret not yourself. Because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. <laughs> okay, God, I'm getting it. It tends only to evil doing. For evildoers shall be cut off. But they who wait and hope and look for the Lord in the end shall inherit the earth. Uh, we haven't even got to the good part yet. For yet a little while and the evildoer will be no more. Though you look with care where they used to be, they will not be found. But the meek in the end shall inherit the earth and they shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Everybody say it's not over till it's over and it's not over yet. The wicked plot against the uncompromisingly righteous. The upright and right standing with God. They gnash at them with their teeth. Here it comes. The Lord laughs at the wicked. For he sees that their own day of defeat is coming. Okay. You know what God is doing right now with all this junk going on in the world? <laughs> Not because he thinks it's funny, but because he's already written the end of the book. And we win. Amen. We win. We need to do what we can do. And there are things we can do. But I can't make everybody love God. I wish they would, but I can't make them love God. I've even got some people that are closer to me in my life that I just would love to just cram what I know down their throat. But I can't do it. You can't make people change. You can't make them love God. You can study and you can pray and you can trust the Holy Spirit, but you cannot change yourself. You can say no, but you still have to ask God to give you the strength to carry that no out. God won't say no for you, but he does have to give you the strength to bring it through to the finish. And I love to think about that. Fret not yourself because of the wicked and the evildoers. Don't fret yourself when it looks like somebody's taking advantage of you. Don't fret yourself, yourself when you hear that people that you love and trusted with your secrets have tro told your secrets. Don't fret yourself when people misunderstand you and they say all kinds of wicked, evil things about you. Don't fret yourself when people judge and criticize you and you know down deep inside that you've got a, got a good heart and that they're misjudging you. Don't fret yourself. You know why? In the end, And in the meantime, God's laughing, so I think we ought to laugh with him. Party time. It's time to celebrate. I may be somewhere in between glories, but I'm on my way. I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Amen.
Well, it certainly does take courage to change things. If God's trying to work with us to change us, that takes courage. If there's a circumstance in our life that God is leading us to change, that takes courage. But you know, it also takes courage to accept what you cannot change and maintain a good attitude while you're waiting for God to do what only God can do. You know, Philippians 1, 6 promises us that God has begun a good work in us and that He will complete it and bring it to fulfillment in our lives. But we do have times of waiting and we have special times of really working with the Holy Spirit to let Him have His way in our life.